Welcome to Adapting Class. This mini series on maternity nursing is focusing on concepts that you have to master before you take the end class or if you're in nursing school. Stick around. This video talk about ethics and the fundamentals regarding maternity nursing, something you would like to watch. Let's get to it. First question, as usual, straightforward, is to test some knowledge. What should the bundle height be palpated? A nurse is assessing a client at 19 weeks gestation. Where should you palpate when you're doing an assessment at the symphysis of the pubic, midway between the symphysis pubics and what the umbilicus? One centimeter below the level of the umbilicus, two finger breadth below the symphysis, what? Two finger breadth below the cypher process. There's a concept, like I said, 10 questions with the follow of 10 questions with a lot of concepts. So I want you to write them down so that when you see your question, you remember that concept. The concept is when you're pregnant, the pubic symphysis is here. Is the 12 week mark. The umbilicus is the 20 week mark. And the cipher process is close to 36 weeks, right? So if I'm 19 weeks, I cannot be at a pubic symphysis. I should be close to the umbilicus. Therefore, I'm picking an answer trace close to the um umbilicus. I cannot be above the umbilicus. Therefore, two finger bread below the cipher process is gone. One centimeter below the level of the umbilicus. That is 19, close to that. Midway between the pubic symphysis and the umbilicus, that's here, it's more, less than 19. This is close to 16. Therefore, the right answer is what? One centimeter below the level of the umbilicus. This is the concept you have to master and put it down, write it down, take it with you, and use it whenever you get a question, and that's the key. And therefore, on 19 weeks, the fundus is just below the umbilicus, and that is the content I want you to take with you. Number three is the right answer. Next question, a newborn at one minute has a heart rate of 120. Good cry, some flexion, Pink body with what? Blue extremities and a weak cremis to stimulation. Somebody who took the test, it's a question on after score. Why did they ask? Because it's very important. How do you calculate them? Straightforward. Stick around, take your pen and paper, and listen to what I'm going to see. There's a content associated with the AFCA. It tells us how the patient is doing. And the, the mnemonic is in the same name. A-P-G-A-R. What does each letter signify? What does each letter mean? A is the appearance. How do you look? P is your pose. What is your pose? Grimace is your reflex. We don't use the R, but we call it reflex. Grimace. Activity is your tone. And the respiration is how fast is your respiratory rate. We want the kid's skin to look better. We want the pulse to be high, greater than 100. Your reflexes should be active, right? And then when you're active, your muscles should be working. Flexion, you get one. Anything about flexion is good. If you're limping, you don't get anything. So when you're crying, you have good respiratory activity going on. And, and then the newborn heart rate is 120. That's good. He has a good cry. That is good for me. Flexion, that is your activity. You get a little bit less than the normal activity, so you get one. Pink body, the body has to be pink, but the extremities is what? Blue. Therefore, appearance get one. And he has weak grimace. That means with stimulation. You see grimace when they talk about stimulation reflexes, and therefore, it's not going to get a full point. Based on that, this is what we're going to have. Heart rate is greater than 100, you get two. You have a good cry, you get two. Your tone, which is your flexion, right? You get one. His reflexes, he has grimace, weak grimace, you get one. 
In the process, what do we have? Two, two, one, one, one. Therefore, we have seven as our gas score. You got to master this. 10 is the best you can. If you get anything less than six, we're going to repeat it again in five minutes until you keep on getting normal. That's the concept. And let's review a photo, monitor strip showing uniform deceleration mirroring contraction. This is all words. And Chris, we use that to try to confuse you. If you don't understand the words, you feel like a hard question. That's taking strategy, maternity, and class practice question. I'm describing something on the feudal monitoring strip. What do I say? What, what did I say? Uniform deceleration mirroring contraction. How does the nurse interpret it? If this mommy contract, baby also have what? Deceleration following exactly what the mommy is doing. If mommy contract, baby heart rate come down right away and go down. As soon as mommy contract, baby heart rate is going to go down. That's why I call uniform deceleration mirroring contraction. This is what we call early deceleration. And therefore, what will you do? You got to write your VCHOP mind, right? Early deceleration is due to head compression. And therefore, interpretation is a head compression. This is how you answer this question. And therefore, early deceleration are benign and it caused by what? Fetal head compression. Continue to monitor labor. Number four, which condition most commonly causes what? Recurrent variable deceleration during labor. We've seen it, feature of mine, based on visual of mine. What do you think? A variable deceleration is equivalent to what? Cord compression. So therefore, most common is cord compression. This is a bonus, but you have to know it. I expect you to know it. You, I know you get four out of four. Number five, this, like I said, this maternity series, short, straightforward concept, not beating around the bush. And I tell you, if you know them, all these little things I'm saying, if you know them, when you see a question, you laugh in your head. You said, I got this. And then it's pop it, the funders, 72 hours after delivery. This is an endless concept, a nursing school concept. You have to know that when a mommy deliver, the baby funders is the funders, the funders is supposed to descend. How? One centimeter each day. Right? Where should it be palpated? At the umbilicus? One centimeter above the umbilicus? Two centimeters below the umbilicus? Not palpable below the pubic symphysis. The key. And the concept, after delivery, the, fu the fundus is supposed to descend, what, one centimeter each day. And therefore, if this is the umbilicus, which is at what, 20? If this is the umbilicus, which is at what, 20 centimeters, and the pubic symphysis at 12, every day is supposed to come at one centimeter each day one centimeter and you can see that it can take between seven to eight days for it to descend completely right and therefore at 72 you're going to have one two three three centimeter below the umbilicus that's your hole that is your right answer and therefore pandas descend one centimeter per day postpartum at 72 we should be three centimeter below the umbilicus is this question difficult? No. What do you require? Concept. And what kind of concept? This is what you need. Write them down. Take a note. And when you see a question, trust me, you're going to ace it. Next question, number six. A client with placenta abruption. This is ethical, fundamental on maternity of nursing. There's a bunch of ethics in this area of medicine. And this is what this question is demonstrating. A client with what? Placenta abruption require emergency C-section. The client just received OPA and is not fully alert. What action should the nurse take? You know it. You know this thing. Ethical. Watch my ethics videos on fundamentals of nursing. 
obtain informed consent from the client. That's what you're going to do. Ask the client spouse to sign the consent. The husband will sign the consent. Proceed with surgery and the implied consent. Delay the surgery until the client is alert enough to consent. Look, in ethics, you got to follow fundamentals 101. She's impaired. She received opiate. She cannot do anything. Therefore, what do you do? Usually, it's okay to call family member. It's okay for the husband to consent. But this is the problem. This is the test-taking strategy right there. What do you think in the question that would defeat the purpose of asking the spouse? Need emergency C-section and we have placenta abruption. We have no time. It's an emergency situation. If you don't do anything, baby dies, mommy dies. In order to save both of them, we need to go now. We don't have time for the husband to sign it. We cannot obtain consent from the mother because the client is impaired, right? We cannot obtain consent from the client because the client is impaired. We should proceed under implied consent, which is consistent with an emergency C-section. Delaying patient dies. Concept, ethical, fundamentals of nursing under what? Maternity nursing. I will do some videos on ethical issues related to fundamentals of nursing. Life-threatening emergencies, treatment should not be delayed to obtain consent. Therefore, our right answer is, we all know, proceed with surgery and that imply consent. Number seven, this is the same thing, ethics. A newborn parent refuses the administration of prophylactic erythromycin high huntment after delivery stating, we don't want any unnecessary medication for our baby. What is the next best response? Be therapeutic. But when you're being therapeutic, answer the question. If you don't know, ask for more. That is the easy way to be therapeutic. This medication prevents serious infection. That could cause blindness in your baby. You're speaking. I will have to give the medication because it required by law. Mommy said no. That is fine. I will just document your refusal in the chat. She's not being uh, she's not being informed properly because of what she said. We don't want any unnecessary medication. What she's saying, something is wrong. She's mis misinformed. You should not take misinformation of the patient as a fact. Let me check with your provider to see if we can skip this medication. You are not happy. You want to save the parent. You want to save the kid. The mother is saying something that is not factual. Because of that, you got to make sure what they're saying is factual. It's like trying to get them whether they're competent about what they're saying. We don't want any unnecessary medication for our baby. This is not unnecessary. Educate them about the purpose of prophylactic. What is that? erythromycin high ointment. Hunt, These medications prevent serious infection that could cause blindness in your baby. When you tell the mommy like that, oh, I thought it was so necessary, but now I know this is going to save my baby life. The priority is client education. Parent often refuses due to misunderstanding. They Try to fill the gap in this situation. And you are the best person, the nurse. I know you got this. I know you get seven out of seven. Put down on your comments what you get for this question. Number eight, a client in the second stage of labor is exhausted and having difficulty pushing effectively. What is the next best action? Encourage open gladius pushing with rest between contraction, increase Pitocin infusion, apply fundal pressure, prepare for forceps delivery. This question is straightforward, but I want to show you something. You see a question like that, and then your mind is wide open instead of focusing on the keywords, buzzword. The question says, client is in second stage of labor. That means the baby is about to come, and then we are having what? Difficulty 
pushing. It's not saying that the cervix is not dilated or effaced. Therefore, what is Pitocin going to help you do? The question says pushing. Therefore, pick an answer choice that contains pushing. Right? Number two is a trap. We are not saying the cervix is not dilated or effaced. I never said anything. So why would you pick Pitocin? These are little things that we pick. We get distracted. I said pushing. Fundal pressure does not help with pushing. Now you're left with one and two. Do you want to help the mother or you, now you want to use forceps delivery? There is no evidence that the baby is in trouble. Therefore, maybe the mommy is not doing effectively, right? So help them. Encourage open Gladys pushing with rest between contraction. And this is the way you push. Supportive care include coaching appropriately, breathing technique, rest, and non-invasive intervention before you use forceps. You see how you can answer this question. You don't know anything, but you have to use the sticking strategy. You can master it, number one, right answer. During a prenatal ultrasound, same thing, ethics. The mother reports that the baby's sex not to be disclosed. He said, don't tell anybody who, whether the baby is a male or female. Later, the father asks the nurse for the baby's sex. You want to give it to the father? What should the nurse do? The father is the father. Man. They both are involved. Tell the father the baby sex. It's a male, by the way. Refuse and document the request. Ask the mother for permission. Tell the father to ask the provider. Look, I told you, ethics 101 is all, everywhere. Whether you're talking about OB, talking about any place in the hospital, mother said, don't disclose anything. If you disclose, you violated, it a violation, you are in trouble. Therefore, obey the law. Confidentiality applies what? Even to the family. Nurse respects mother's wishes. You need to respect the wishes. Therefore, don't tell. A nurse review a newborn lab values and it shows elevated maternal serum alpha fetoprotein. What should the nurse suspect? Select or apply. Is it Danstreet syndrome? Is it spinal bifida? Is it gastrochesis? Is it trisomy 18? Is it trisomy 21? The concept is neurotube defect, abdominal wall defect. What you're going to see is elevated alpha fetoprotein. Any tri uh, chromosomal abnormality will see alpha fetoprotein go down. Therefore, what does that mean? If you have chromosomal abnormality, Down syndrome is trisomy 21, which is the same as this one. It's a chromosomal problem. Trisomy 21 is too high, and therefore you have this problem, Down syndrome. You can have trisomy 18. You can have trisomy 21. This will lead to low alpha fetoprotein. Spina bifida is a neurotube defect. Gastrochesis is the abdominal wall defect. This will elevate your alpha fetoprotein. Know this concept. Whenever you see them somewhere, that is the concept you're going to talk about. Elevated alpha fetoprotein will cause by what? Neurotube defect, abdominal wall defect. A low value is chromosomal abnormality. Therefore, by spinal bifida and gastrochesis are your right answer. 10 questions. What was your score? Put that in your comment. Challenge me. Which What kind of concept in OB are you struggling with? We'll make a video. And the next, what? Practice test. Let me know. I hope you gain something from this. 10 questions. Follow the series. If you need more, subscribe to Adapting Class for content like that. Take care of yourself and good luck in your exams.